teachers, some rogue teachers have decided to misuse, not generally, some. Because we've actually seen such scenarios across. But, 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 but even before we finish these orders, I want to make my point, and I'm sure, I don't know why Honorable McClap is really making a lot of noise. Honorable members, allow me to... I would, pr I would I pray, Honorable Soro and members, that we do not abuse the point of orders. Please. Be relevant Let me make because my point. I see members are using them to debate. Okay. But, but I want to withdraw. Teachers are never rogue. They just like chicken. But as I said, they are never rogue. They like chicken. But, Speaker, <laughs> but Speaker, that thing has been misused. The other day, last week, and I think it's very important for me to say this, I went to visit some, somebody in uh, Diani, and I found students, the grade six students, just beside somewhere that I'm trying to put up somewhere in the coastal region. And I found students, grade six, who were supposed to graduate to grade seven, seated by the road, and they could not be admitted in school because they did not have school uniforms, they did not have some you know, things that are required, like several requirements, and when I asked for that form, what I saw written in that form as requirement for a student transiting to grade seven shocked me. The, the things that parents cannot afford, things that, like you're telling a grade, seven, a grade six student, now you're transiting to grade seven, you are giving them serious, expensive requirement for a parent who was preparing to save money for, for form one. I think it, 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 we really rush this thing. There is need for the government to review this CBC thing. And I do not know where these people of the committee of, you know, CBC or something, I don't know what they are doing. I, where did they move? They did not even come. I, I think these people are sitting somewhere eating mandazi and then go there and reco do recommendations that are funny. Honorable Speaker, we are implore on this house to find a way to reverse this system back to the system that we all know. And then we gradually start moving. We, we do it gradually. Equip our schools. Look here, as we are speaking here today, members of parliament do not have adequate funds for CDF. Today we have about 33 million. We are being told we need to do labs in, for purposes of uh, JSS. The Ministry of Education does not have money. Equalization fund is not sufficient across the country. And then we are here being told, you know, CBC is important. Let's support it. Let's support it. We are representatives of the people. We are not stupid by going through 844 or 76 or something. We, we are, look, we are very sad people here. Let's revert to the previous system. Let's revert to the 844 so that our students and the rural constituencies can progress. And I think the chair for education committee has heard me. And this is very clear. Thank you very much. Member for Gedongori, Radhanu Amoshomba. Thank you, Madam Speaker, for giving me this opportunity to indeed, as a trained teacher, to give my contribution into this motion. It is sad and very sad that we are debating the future of the people God has entrusted, entrust, entrusted unto us to shape their future, to give them life and hope. Those wonderful children that are going through this system, the CBC. It is unfortunate, Madam Speaker, that in this country, we do not give way to the Ministry of Planning, whose core business is to plan the economy of this country. In fact, the most lucrative ministries in this country are ministries of health, ministries of agriculture, ministry of water and land, not because we find them worth giving them weight, but because they control a lot of money. We ignore the critical ministries like Ministry of Planning and Finance, the ministry that is supposed to be giving us economic planning, well contributed and well thought, that is supposed to, be have, to have advised us on the CBC before implementation. Like one of my colleagues have said, Madam Speaker, I still as a teacher do not understand why we had to go the million kilometers rush to implementing CBC. I do not know the people, that who sat, the people who sat in a certain boardroom and decided that they are going to implement CBC 
even with against the advisory that was given by the then cabinet secretary, Madam Amina. Madam An Amina spoke very strongly against CBC implementation without thorough thinking and planning. But I do not know the kind of motivation that was behind the so-called the government of the day, that we had to take a risk to mess a generation in this country by hurriedly implementing a system that has not been framed properly. Madam Speaker, as a mother, it pains me to walk into schools, like in my constituency, and find four learners in a school, which is supposed to be a JSS center, four learners. How do we employ four teachers for four learners? How do we put a laboratory for four learners? How do we buy equipment in the laboratory for four learners? Where are economic planners that are supposed to be advising the governments of the day? What are they doing and why do we pay them a salary in those offices that they sit? Madam Speaker, it is sad that we are politicizing the life of a generation of this country. We must come fresh and real to what we are doing. It is time we ask ourselves whether we are doing justice to the seats that we've been given by the people of Kenya. They have elected us so that we can advocate for the rights of their children. Most of these parents do not have a voice. We have a voice. Most of these teachers we are talking about and joking around here in parliament, because I can see a joke here. They have no voice. We have a voice. We must stop politicizing CBC and become the parents God has made us to be. We must become the leaders that have been elected honorably to stand in the gap and save a generation. How many children are at home right now because they cannot afford uniform for JSS? How many children are at home right now because they cannot ad uh, afford a desk? Madam Speaker, shockingly, these are the same, same children, runners who are in primary school, they had a desk, but just because they have graduated to JSS, they are being forced to buy a fresh and a new desk. For what purpose, Madam Speaker? It is us that God has entrusted us to do it. It is us the whole country is looking upon. It is us who are supposed to advise, and we must stand in the gap and provide a sober direction for JSS. If we cannot be able to implement JSS, we would rather stop it and get back to the drawing board and look for a solution because we are going to be asked by God, why did you not do what you're supposed to have done? I do not understand the rush. I do not understand, uh, do not understand the thinking behind JSS if, you can, JSS if you cannot be able to implement. Madam Speaker, please, I want to be heard. One day, one time, if you ever go to heaven that we read there, we shall be asked a question. I don't know what you will answer as a member of parliament. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Honorable Irene Mayaka. Um, thank you, Honorable Speaker, um, for giving me the opportunity to contribute to this very important motion. Honorable Speaker, um, when you do a cursory look at some of the countries that have been able to do CBC and implement it, uh, like France, Canada, Finland, those are countries that have fantastic infrastructure. The idea behind CBC was a fantastic idea. The level of interaction that you see with our, with our children has been great. But then again, this cannot be implemented in our country because we don't have the proper infrastructure. The beginning success and failure of CBC starts and ends with proper infrastructure. Madam Speaker, one of the things that I see a lot of parents grappling with is that we are forced to download and print different things. So you can imagine a student who is down there in Nyamira, in Nyamotentomi, and they're told that they need to download uh, things for their children, and they don't even have, number one, access to electricity. Not even access to, uh, proper access to um, internet con uh, connectivity. Madam Speaker, this country has a long way to go. Let's, let's, let's agree with that. Our children are suffering. And a lot of hidden costs are hidden behind this CBC issue. Honorable members here have been speaking about uh, parents being asked to, to, to pay for desks, parents being asked to pay for new uniforms, things that they cannot even afford. And these problems come back to the CBF factor because the same elected leaders are the ones that parents are looking up to 
for them to provide backup, which again, we can't even do because the courts are also fighting the CDL. So Madam Speaker, what I want to say, and I, I, I support the fact that we allowed this very important motion to take, uh, to take priority, is that as a country, we need to make decisions. Madam Speaker, when you look at uh, some of the students who started with CD, uh, CBT, especially from very young, there are those who did not even take 804. And for these ones, these are the ones that I really feel sorry for. Because if we decide as a country we are going back to 804, then what happens to them? Where do they begin from? Do they have to do a, a, a crash course so that they can also get to know what 844 is all about? Because they never got to experience 844. These are the students that we really need to look at. And maybe the solution wouldn't be that we go back to 844. The actual solution should be that can we find a style of doing CBT that works for everyone? Not only for those of us who are in the urban sector, but those who are in the rural sector. Because the ones who are affected the most are actually the students and teachers who are back in the rural sector. Again, Madam Speaker, the CPT competence exam uh, normally examine students based on your talent and your level of competence. Sometimes these are things that we are not able to actually put on paper and structure and say that this is how they are being uh, tested. Because how do you then know that this student has a talent in, in writing and this other one does not have a talent in writing, they have a talent in speaking. So do you then give the one who has a talent in writing a lower grade in speaking and the other way around? just because they don't have the same level of competence. Madam Speaker, and as I conclude also, I just want to speak about the teachers, because the teachers who are teaching CBT have been given almost 14 subjects. These same teachers are parents to teachers and children who are doing CBT. So what time do they have to commit to their children when they go back at home in the evening? Because we also need to be fair as a, as a country. And as I wind up, Madam Speaker, I just want to say that sometimes Yes, benchmarking is good, but also as a country, before we run to benchmark and adopt systems from other countries, we need to first of all be realistic and compare the kind of infrastructure that we have in a country. I know for a fact, like for example, the country that I gave an example of, in Kenya we really wanted to adopt the Finland system. But look at 